All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again and welcome back. Back in the studio, been a while. Got a massive canvas and ready to go, pretty excited about that. Buckets of oil paint as usual. Actually, before we go any further, I'll just explain some of the paint I've got here. I've got Viridian Green, Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre and Titanium White. Now I reckon that'll do me, that'll be pretty much the whole thing, well it will be actually, that'll be the whole colour scheme that I'm using. Got two blues today, don't really need it. Basically I was just running out of a bit of blue, a bit of cobalt blue, so I thought I'd throw a little bit more ultramarine in, that's no other reason other than that. Alright, so it's going to be a big wave painting, can't wait to get started. And uh, palette knives as usual, 100% palette knife, we'll see how we go. Alright, what we'll do first is go for the biggest differences between having you know, like usual, a blank white canvas and the finished product. Now, with oil paint, I do prefer to put the darks in first. It's easier to work lights over the dark colours. You can do it the other way around and later on through the picture I will, but at the start, start off with your darks first and then build yourself up. All right, I'll just stand back and see if I've got that horizon line. Oh, one more thing. That horizon line I've just taped off level. That means through the whole painting, I'll know that I've got a level horizon, so I won't finish the painting and then think <laughs> something's wrong, what's going on? I'll know straight away that if the painting is balanced, the horizon's level and everything's working perfect. All right. Alrighty then, I'll use some Alizarin Crimson today, and a bit of Viridian Green, that'll make a fairly good dark. Actually, a little bit of Burnt Sienna added with that. Now, if you hear any of those chook noises, don't worry, the chook house is right there. Okay. You're getting a bit clucky and whatever. All right, so we'll put this darkest dark, I reckon, here. I want plenty of red in it today, because I'll be pulling back to it, and because the seascape itself is going to be a fairly green one, where are we? Because it's going to be fairly green, when you pull back you want the complementary colour of green on the colour wheel, the opposite is red. So it'll be just a nice accent difference to have a bit of red-brown rather than, or a dark red as the undertone. Complementary colours. I'll we'll just throw a tiny bit of blue in that as well. I always use this blue. That's getting that lovely and dark, look at that. So well, that's pretty much it for the darks. We don't want to get too carried away with that. I'll just stand back. And before I do, before I do, so a little bit more here. Round that rock off a little bit. Right, stand back and have a look. That's not too bad. Now I think what I'll do before I go any further is I'll establish that horizon line and then pull that tape off. Ultramarine blue and white, and I'll use some of those darks that I was. I'm trying to knock. The, I'm trying to knock the chromatic saturation down of that blue. I don't want it to be pure blue, so I'll use some of the burnt siennas and some of those alizarin's darker tones that I had from before. There's a bit too much white in that. Let's just knock her off. Is that chook? Chook mucking around. All right. That's a pretty dark colour. A little bit more red maybe, just to warm it up a bit. What do we got? Yeah, it's not bad. I could go tiniest twang darker. A bit more burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. That's giving me a nice dark to really accent the wave against. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. need too much, we'll just pop that in quick smart and then uh, I'll leave a few patches so the wave can break through the horizon. Alright, that'll be tape service purpose, let's get it off shall we? Look at that! Yeah, those chooks are a bit clucky, let's just get some viridian green, a bit of white. 
little bit of yellow ochre with that. What I'm going to try and do now is just basically block out where I want the wave to be. Give myself an idea on what's going on. That could be there. That one can be up there. Yeah, that can be there, I reckon. Yep. All right. Now let's just go maybe a bit burnt sienna. Yellow ochre and burnt sienna. There we go. And plenty of white. Just knocking up a bit of this foreground stuff, but what I want it to be, it's like the, the water has stirred the bottom up and so you've got the sand coming up into the uh, foam and whatever itself. So instead of having those greens and oceany colours, you can get some broken up colours like so. Now I just put a bit of green on the edge. Yellow ochre and viridian green on the edge of that. Half mix it with that sand. Let's have a look. Just my stirred up colours here. Just a tiny bit of a dark up here. We'll go get some dark. Make it a lot of value. Just get a little bit more, there we go. A little bit there, alright. Just basically feel some stuff in. Feel the random moving thread. I'm moving quite quick because I just want that energy in the work. White, burnt sienna. Mix, 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 mix. A bit more burnt sienna. White. Just changing some angles here back and realised that I wanted a bit more of this type of action happening there. Not happening there. All right. Back into it. Viridian green again. Yellow ochre. Bit of that blue as well. What are we mixing up? And actually needs a bit of burnt sienna. I'm just trying to mix up some of the colour of the wave itself. So we've got burnt sienna, yellow oak, viridian green, white. Just trying to settle on something that I think will be about correct. So I need to add a bit more burnt sienna I'm finding out. That's good, but we need a darker value. I'll move a slightly darker version of it over here with less white in it. That's good, mix it up. Getting there. Getting there. Yeah, that's good. Actually, it could even go slightly darker, I think. <laughs> even less white. We'll use that green, the lighter values as well, but at the moment I want to get a really nice, deep, deep value to work with. Through the middle here, look at that, that's better. Nice, deep value through here. Right up there. Stick that through there. That's coming along. Moving quite quick, like I said, because I want to create the feeling of movement. A bit more of that dark down in there. going good but just want a little bit more let's do some more viridian green just before I get really carried away with any sort of refining I just want to make sure hang on, I just want to make sure I've got things where I want them to be so that can be about there that can be about there now I'm going to go for some very high key green on the back of the wave. Quite often when the wave breaks you get that beautiful high key turquoise. I want to add a bit of that in because that's just such a lovely colour. Put 
So I'm going to look at that. Alright. Pull some of this through. Trying to get that nice flow and energy there. Okay, just feeling as I go, feeling where I want things to be. That's broken the uh, horizon, that's good. All right, so we've got all that blocked in. Now what I think I'll do is go for the biggest differences between having unfinished painting and having a finished product. And of course, the next thing I would imagine would be the sky. So, tons of white, slap that there. What are we gonna go for? Some ultramarine blue, a little bit of magenta. I'm trying to knock up a, a nice coastal haze on the horizon. So a little bit of burnt sienna with that, just to knock back the uh, colour intensity, not quite as, as blue and the, this, the chromatic saturation has been knocked back just a, a tad. We've got to set up the right tonal value and I feel it should go a little bit darker than I had it been. Let's just have a look. I'll just mix up it a bit very quick, try and speed it up. Just have a look at what I've got. Yeah, see I want that to go darker. So I'm going to add more blue, more magenta and more brown in the form of burnt sienna. Get that all... Get that all mixed up. Just got to set the right value. So you, what I mean by value, if you're uh, not into tonal painting, I'm, most of you guys watching probably know what I'm talking about, but if you've got white here and black there and every little gradient in between, there are all the different tonal values. So white's the highest key and black obviously is the darkest. Well, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to send this sky a little bit closer to the darker values rather than too white. I had it a little bit light in value. And the reason I want it fairly dark is so the wave can really pop against it. But I don't want to go too dark. It's just getting it right. Those birds sound lovely today. We'll just block that in. That in lovely. Now, I won't touch the horizon yet, I'll get into that soon. I'll just use upward marks at the moment, bring it very close to the horizon. Very close indeed, but not quite touching. There we go, there we go. All right, so we've got that. We can start getting back into it again. Might have a fair bit of that today. Go right up this far, shall we? Walk that across. Plenty of variety in marks and broken colour and whatever else. Nice neat edges. Alright, so that's lovely. Now, let's go up a layer. It's pretty much the coastal haze. And then what I'll do is I'll go up to the actual sky colour itself. Now, if I've got myself enough room here, let's go a bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. And cobalt blue. I just want it to have ever so slightly green twang to it. Not too much, but just a little bit. Because I find that that lower part of the sky quite often has some sort of hazes and whatever else in it, so. Seems to go more of this slightly ochery green. Is that the right value? A little bit more blue in that, that'll darken the value a bit and also tend it more towards the blue rather than too much of the ochres. Let's have a look. And 
no, I will go a bit more of the ochre. Now, by adding those extra things, I just brought it down slightly darker tone because I added more of the colours, but there's less of the white in proportion. Yeah. We'll just add a tiny bit more. Why? Every time you add a colour, you need to keep on adjusting it because adding one colour <laughs> affects the whole thing. And I found then that I just needed a little bit more after adding that extra bit of ochre. Just needed a little bit more white to bring the tonal value back to a slightly lighter tone. All right, so it's going on nice. Get that blocked in quick, smart. These chooks are having a bit of fun, aren't they? That is good, so I'll go up a layer. I'll add a little bit more blue of the ochres. Still got a bit of the ochre with it, but it's more of the straight cobalt blue. Slightly darker tone over here. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's good. I can go there. So, the nice grate for blocking in, as you can see. This block, 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 block. Now that I've done that, I keep on going. I'll go for some ultramarine blue as I get to the top. Darker tone of value, but also slightly redder. And the ultramarine blue has more red in it. It's more of a red dominant than the cobalt blue. Those chooks, they're loving it. And why wouldn't they? Now you can see that slightly more red and slightly darker value. There we go, get that on lovely. Get that on quick smart. Didn't quite mix up enough, so I'll just add a little bit more. Mix, 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 mix. Nice and neat at the edges. Just take my time on the edges here, getting that all lovely and neat. Before I go cranking back into it too much. Bit of a workout doing the sky, I tell you. Just a little bit. Ah, start blending. Start blending. Use the knife to pull the two colours together. Little broken marks. Let's quickly move all along. Mix up this ochre colour, blend this ochre up higher. Little marks. I don't know if you can hear those chooks, I reckon you can, but they're, they're really having a bit of a talking session. They seem to be enjoying themselves. So I'm just blending and blending. It takes a little bit of time, but Worth doing, getting that subtle gradation. Want that clean. Little marks here and there. Chucky, chucky. Pull that up, pull that together, like so. Blend, blend, blend. Well, that's looking pretty, pretty blended there. That's pretty good. So now what I'll do is I reckon I've just got a lot of white canvas there at the moment. I reckon I'll put in some of the actual foam itself. Now I do want it to be keyed down, like I was saying, on the tonal scale between black to white. I want it to be a light value, but I don't want it to be completely white because I want to save those accents for later. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing in some of these other colors with it just a little bit. Just those chooks are loving it, okay. Let me just see what I've actually got here. So that's 
off-white that'll allow me to be able to use my full accents down the track when I need them. I'm just going to stick that in. Move that around. Going to need a bit more of it, so we'll keep on going. Getting through that white. That white will be gone in no time. Now that tonal value was slightly green. I want it to be more of a neutral white, so I'll add the opposite on the colour wheel, which is red. So if you add red to a slight green, it'll send it grey, because I want it to be more of a neutral grey. Right. I can go up there like so. Pull all that foam, that lovely foam. Juicy, thick paint. Stick it in like so. Right up to the edges, lovely, lovely. Let's keep on going here. Can go through there. Get more of these colours going. A bit more of the red with it again. I can go up in there like so. Yeah, that's good. All right. Smear that through there, lovely. A little bit more of the green ocean colour here. Bit more of the stirred up sand with the burnt sienna and the ochre. Yellow ochre. That's it. Let's get a bulk of paint on so we've got something to work with. Keep on going here, just make some nice neutral colours, put a bit more of the red in there. I'll just stand back for a minute and have a look. Alright, I'm going through that white. Those chalks. Going through the white like it's going out of style, so I use this cartridge here. Get some big chunks of white, look at that, that's what we want. Just pop that down there. Alright, so, we'll keep on going with that. I'll just keep blocking in some of these values. A bit of ultramarine, magenta. What have we got here? Got ultramarine and magenta here to darken the value a little. Throw some of them in. Like I said, I'll get to the pure white as well, but at the moment I'm just painting the undercolour versions. Put that in there. Hang on, there's a dog barking. Coming along all right, we'll just keep on going with that. A bit more of the magenta and the ultramarine blue. Less of that green, I don't so much want the green in there. I'll throw some up here. I just want to break the horizon in a few spots for a bit of variety. Like so. Nice. 
coming along all right. I might just clean the knife up a little and just, just start blending a few subtle tonal variances within this wave. We'll just bring the wave to the edge first. Hang on. Get the wave to the edge. Now, with little marks, I'm just going to start putting some subtle variances of tone and colour into the wave. Pull some through and actually soften with the knife. I've got the paint on there already. What I'm trying to do is get some softness so you can like so. It's almost like you can see the weed on the bottom there because I'm pulling back to the darks that I stuck in earlier. So it's almost like the weed, not the yeah, the rocky weed is starting to shine through. Taking paint back with different mark making. Now that brings up incredible softness. Palette knives are not always the best thing for softening, but if you do a few te techniques like this, it enables you to get that incredible softness and spontaneity that we want just by rubbing back with the knife. Okay, so we need some softness here, so I'll just pull through like so. Maybe just through there. So we'll get some really high key blue maybe, so nice clean stuff. Cobalt blue and white. Just want to put a bit on the top of the wave there. Pull through, real softening effect. All right, I might just grab some pure white, pretty close to pure white, just lightly dance it across now. What I'm trying to do is, you've got that low key white. Now I just want to dance a few accents across the top here. Just like the lights catching certain, the higher aspects, the lights catching top of the foam. Gives you more of that 3D feel to the foam. We're just going to have a fair bit in there. We're just knife upside down. Picking up some of these. Pure white, beautiful stuff. Slap that on there, that's what I wanted, yeah. Put some accents there. That's looking good through there. Put a bit more there. More variety in that. Just gonna pull up there. Let's just get the little knife now and uh, get some pure white, some real accents. Just want to feel this wave and just add the smallest highlights here and there to really give the feeling. 
the illusion of detail. Little bits here and there, fine marks. You've got all the big chunky bits in. Now it's time to put some really fine marks and they'll really contrast the fact that the rest of it's very broadly and quickly applied. Those little marks will really jump out in contrast. And I believe a painting, as you know, is always about contrast and this contrast is super refined against big blocks of ill-defined, I guess. All right, well, here we are in the other studio. I've just had a cup of tea. I didn't feel like I could progress any further in the other studio. With the other studio, you've got a particularly bright, it's natural light, but it's particularly bright coming down. And I find it's really good for matching all the colors and tonal values that I want. But in some ways, because it's so clean and bright, it makes it hard to get that illusion of reality. When I stand back, I can't get back far enough to see the bits that I want to pull up, I guess you could say, and bring out a little bit more real. Whereas in this studio, not only am I seeing it with fresh eyes, it's always good to view a painting in different lights, not only am I seeing it with fresh eyes, but I'm also, the light's not quite as intense in here, so I can also see, when I stand back, I can see that it's already starting to become realistic, and I can see what parts just to play up on, because I don't want to overwork it, I don't want to wreck the spontaneity, I just want to keep on finishing it, and so have a cup of tea, have a bit of lunch, come back out, now look at it and I see I could just put a bit of refinement, key a few things down, pull a few things up to get the composition to flow how I want and whatever else. Let's get into it. What I might do is get some off-white again, get some of that foam which is more of the keyed down foam, it's not pure white. And uh, you've got the lovely white foam here, but I just want to emphasise a little bit on the underside maybe, just a little bit of just lightly drag it. A little bit of the shadow tones under there. It's all very subtle. I might just also get the other knife. Get some pure white. Got a bit of pure white there. And we can also stick just in a few easily seen spots like the light against dark very easy spot easily seen spot when you've got light tone and dark tone a great spot to put a fine accent just a bit of that breaking foam here and there a few of them up there You don't want too many because each mark makes a difference. All right, well, we've got a few extra refining marks, just little marks here and there, just to pull it up. Pretty happy with what's going on. I reckon I'll leave it. I want to keep that spontaneity, as I've said before. When you go down the beach and you're looking at the surf, it's all moving. It's not, you know, it's not stationary like a photo. And you saw me block it in very rapidly with the big knife. And the idea of that is to get, try and 
get that motion in the picture, get that feeling of movement that a wave has. No wave looks static, it always has that feeling of motion. So in a two-dimensional picture, I'm trying to give the feeling of movement. Now, it'd be so easy now to go over the top and make it photographically real and just super refined. But what'll happen there is you'll actually lose that motion and energy. So the trick is to have the big broadness, but at the same time, stick those little refinements in just enough to suggest reality. And then hopefully you get that beautiful contrast between big ab abstract marks and then super refined. And that's a nice contrast in itself. Happy with all the rock work, the lead in, the different variety of techniques, sky, blend of the surf up there. All right, pretty happy. What I'll do now is we'll get that camera, we'll come buzzing right in and have a close look at the technique. All right, thank you.